Welcome back folks. Today we're doing a very short video. I just need to get something out there. Uh, it's been a while, but the weather has not been cooperative. Not the way you normally expect. It's just been super hot, muggy, nasty. It's freaking hot. Uh, it's really hard to get out and do a video. So, one, number one, what the fuck? You guys didn't like blowing up the water jugs? Seven views in like a week and a half? Come on. Uh, I'm assuming YouTube's algorithm just isn't putting it up there if you're not a subscriber and subscribers just aren't watching. I don't know. Anyway, I figured that was a fun short little video and nobody watched it. So, one thing the algorithm is telling me is that you guys are watching the videos on this rifle. So I'm curious, in the comments, put what you're interested in hearing or seeing or, or having me do with this rifle. Um, to me, this is kind of my middle ground rifle. It is relatively light. You know, it's not a, a super heavy gun. 6.5 is a nice middle of the road caliber. It is very comfortable to shoot. It suppresses really well. Um, hits with authority. You know, it's not a, a 2.23, but it's not a 300 something. Um, it's in the 300 or 308 category, really. I really like it. I really think that as a caliber, the 6.5 ticks all those boxes. Uh, previously, 308 was that caliber for people. And I think that 6.5 really narrows that down. All the things we liked about 308, the 6.5 does just as well in the, in the sense that it, like, it fits in the same uh, magazines. It fits in the same case boxes. It, it weighs roughly the same amount when you carry it. All those kind of things. But it's got better reach. Uh, it's just ballistically a superior round. For hunting, very often it is a superior round. Bullet selection is still getting there, but on the other hand, 6.5 is not new. It's been around for, God, I mean, we're probably at a century. So... A lot of bullets were made for the European 6.5s for hunting that now get used in the, in the Creedmoor. Soft shooting, comfortable. I really like it. Uh, the Bruguera, in this particular case, it's kind of an in-between weight. It's a kind of in-between style. This is designed to be comfortable enough to carry in the field. You've got sling attachments. Both sides, front and back. Um, I've got a bipod on here, but I probably, honestly, am going to take it off. I've mostly been shooting this off of a bag, literally a, a backpack. Um, the, the front here slots in between two pouches on the top of a backpack. And I've got a fleece packed into that area underneath. It's comfy, it works. Um, either that or a rest. The bipod has the same problem bipods always do. When you're not shooting off of dirt, grass, any kind of slightly softer surface, if you're shooting on concrete or, or a wood shooting table, they bounce. And eh. one of the things I like about the 6.5 over a 308, it's closer to 223 or a 556 in that your sight picture, you stay on target. When you pull the trigger, the the bounce you get, you can still see your point of impact. Now, obviously, I can always roll off the magnification, you know, crank it back, and see. I can leave this at 20 for the most part and still see my point of impact. That is awesome. When I did the shooting the water jugs, I got to watch it with all of them. I, I mean, I, when I was shooting the 223, I was shooting that through... A AR-15. Um, God, what did I have on there for a scope? I had the two and a half to ten. Did I? Yes. <laughs> Brain is not functional. And I really enjoyed watching that water jug go flying, right? With this guy, I got to watch it basically vaporize. Uh, it blew the crap out of that jug. And 
the video honestly doesn't do it justice. When it hit, it was just a splash of water that went everywhere. And the jug, it came forward <clears throat> because the water exploded at the back, propelling it forward. But it just, it had flattened those. They, it just peeled wide open, whereas the 223 did not. What you didn't see on that video was that a close range 9mm was much closer to this than to the 223. Uh, I'm going to have to do a comparison between handguns at, say, 25 feet and the rifles at 100 yards. I think that it's very misleading doing the water jugs because water jugs don't have to give. When you hit them, the water has to go somewhere. And short of a FMJ, which just punches a hole, and we saw how effective that was. It actually works pretty well. Uh, you get a magnified result, shall we say, versus versus a, a real world hunting or self defense scenario. Anyway, tell me what you're interested in. Uh, I don't know what it is people are curious about on this rifle. Most of the videos that people are watching about it are my initial impressions and like first range trip videos. And they pretty much cover the basics. So if there's something detailed on this you wanna know about, you know, how does the, the butt stop system work? Um, you know, what's the best accuracy you've gotten out of it, which is not super impressive uh, by my standards. It's decent, but I haven't done super careful load development. Uh, I'm getting a little under minute of angle. I know the rifle's capable of more. I just don't care. Uh, for my purposes, that's plenty. It's probably mostly me. I'm a little out of practice. So, I don't know. You tell me, what do you want to see about this rifle? I will say that I'm loving it suppressed. Um, I'm very happy that I got the slightly longer barrel. Uh, I got the 24 inch instead of the 22. That's a Cabela's thing. Uh, maybe you can get that other places. Maybe you can order it direct. But it is slightly longer. I don't know that it makes a huge difference overall, but I think it probably is helping the suppression. And, you know, I don't need... It's already relatively compact. It's not a super short rifle, but it's not long. Don't know. So, you tell me. Take care, have fun, stay safe, y'all. Luckily, I don't have to edit this one. Bye. Say hi. <laughs>